In your notes, go ahead and respond to this entry question. What makes people desperate? Consider conditions, events, and causes. Note this picture here on the left. Um, this is a picture of children in Germany, German children, playing with stacks of money during the period of hyperinflation following World War I. Um, so, so those blocks that you see there are actually piles of money strapped together. Um, this money was as wor was worthless, essentially, um, and so children were tying it all together and using it as playing blocks. So, um, what what conditions would make people desperate? Um, do you think these children are, are desperate? Their money is, is invaluable. And so what sort of conditions, events, and things would cause desperateness? Today we're going to be learning about the rise of fascism in Nazi Germany, um, and in, in essence, the rise of the Nazis. So we're going to be taking notes today. If at any point you need to pause the video to, um, to be able to write down some of the things on the slides, please do so. So the term fascism, fascism, fascism means authoritarian, an extremely right-wing form of government. Um, authoritarian means authority. One or, um, or maybe a few people have the authority, and they basically control everything. Um, this is extremely right-wing. Usually they're ultra-conservative, ultra-patriotic, um, and, and, and right-wing. So think... Um, our Republican Party to the extreme. So, um, so, 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 extremely patriotic, ex extremely conservative, pro-America, pro-American ideals, um, and in this case, we're talking about pro-Germany. Um, fascism is very conservative, um, money-wise. Um, they usually favor, you know, the the majority over the minority, um, and different things like that. Um, fascism tends to unite people. It unites a country under one mission, one ideology, and one religion. And so fascists tend to be um, intolerant of other religions, other ideas, um, and other, other ideologies. Fascists grow, um, view violence and imperialism as a form of nationalism. Um, so they believe that expanding your country is a way of um, improving your country and, and showing your country's power and dominance. Um, and they believe that stronger countries or stronger states have the right to expand into weaker states because they're better than other states. Um, these countries, fascist countries, tend to be extremely racist, um, as we saw in, in, in Nazi Germany and otherwise. Um, they believe that the people um, are not allowed to contradict the government, and so you see in fascist countries a rise of sort of one mindset, one um, idea um, governing politics. Um, Fascism did not exist until Italy during World War I. Italy was a fascist country during World War I. And we see a rise of fascism in all sorts of different European countries after World War I. Anti-Semitism is another term that we need to know in order to understand World War I and other world events. Um, a Semite is someone of an, eth of an ethnicity that speaks or spoke a Semitic language. A Semitic language is an ancient Middle Eastern language, such as Hebrew or Arabic. Um, it can include Jews and Arabs. But most commonly, Semites are Jews. And so for our purpose, when you hear anti-Semitism, um, you should think anti-Jewish. So anti-Semitism is prejudice against Semites, and Semites, for our purposes, are Jews. So World War II. Fascist Germany invaded Poland to, pay, to take back the land it lost in World War I. Hitler rose to power by tapping into German people's anti-Semitism. He blamed Jews for economic conditions following World War I. And he united people with his oratory. Oratory is um, powerful speaking. 
after World War I, a small, um, semi-socialist government, um, socialist being liberal, essentially the opposite of the Nazis, um, government develops in Germany. It was called the Weimar's Republic. Germany was on the brink of chaos. In 1919, German leaders drafted a constitution in the city of Weimar. Um, Germans blamed the Republic for the Treaty of Versailles. Um, they saw the economic conditions, the inflation, and other things as the fault of this Weimar Re Republic, and they blamed the Republic for this treaty that um, caused them to be in such um, economic straits and, and having such problems. With the help from German powers, um, the Republic brought the in inflation under control. Um, the Republic was actually uh, su super helpful in, in, in stopping inflation um, and helping to stabilize the German in economy. In 1924, U.S., British, and French proposed to reduce German war payments to help them out. But in 1929, the Great Depression um, hit Germany and, and everybody else in the world pretty hard. And we will learn about um, the Great Depression very soon in our class. Nazis rise to power. Hitler thought that the German army during, um, he fought in the German army during World War I, so he was considered a war hero, somebody that, that many people knew. Um, in 1919, he, jo he joined a small group of white ring wing extremists that despised the Weimar government. And within a year, he became the leader to the National Socialist German Workers, um, also known as the Nazis. And he organized the Nazis to fight in the streets against their political enemies. The picture here is an early picture of the Nazi party um, gathering um, sort of pre um, any, any anti-Semitism um, tendencies and other things. Hitler himself in 1923 made a failed attempt to seize power in Munich and was arrested and found guilty of treason. While in prison, Hitler wrote a book that became super popular. It's called Mein Kampf, and it's also um, known as, or in English it's translated to My Struggle. Um, the book reflected on Hitler's obsessions, his extreme nationalism, which developed in his time during World War I, um, racism, and anti-Semitism. Um, he blamed the Jews for a lot of the problems that Germany was having, and many people um, in Germany seemed to identify with his struggle. This book was, was pop culture, top charts, and, um, and people, people read it widely. Hitler believed that Germans were superior and a, quote, master race. His greatest enemies were the Jews um, because of their different beliefs. He blamed Germany's defeat in World War II on a conspiracy from Marxists, um, also known as communists, Jews, corrupt politicians, and business leaders. After less than a year after he was released from, or he was released from prison, unemployment grew. Um, as unemployment grew, Nazi membership grew to almost a million members. Um, Hitler's promise was to end reparations, um, end sort of these agreements with the Western powers, to create jobs, and to rearm Germany, which was something they were disarmed after World War I. And so he promised to basically violate the Treaty of Versailles and to begin rearming the Germans. In 1933, Hitler was appointed to Chancellor of um, of Germany under the Weimar Constitution, but within a year, he became the dictator of Germany. Hitler began suspending rights. He um, destroyed communists and socialists and disbanded other political parties. He purged his own party, brutally executing Nazis that he felt were disloyal. Nazis learned that Hitler demanded strict obedience. Hitler believed that the Germans were the Third Reich, or um, a master race. Um, 
the first Reich, or the first master race, he believed, were the Romans. They were um, superior and exceptional. They created the first um, modern um, governments. And then um, the Bismarcks in the 1800s were the second. And he believed that the Germans were the third master race. And so they called themselves, he called um, this, this time, um, the German people at this time, the third Reich, or the third master race. This ideology was motivating for many Germans, and he quickly gained control over Germany. <clears throat> he began large-scale public works projects um, or programs. Many people were put to work, um, which really inspired people to get behind him. If you're um, living in these desperate conditions, and suddenly someone gives you a job, you might be really grateful to that person um, and really pleased with the progress that, that that person in that party is making. And so people are finally put to work building highways, um, houses, replanting forests. They have jobs. They have pride in themselves and in Germany again. He began to rearm Germany and unite Germany and Austria. Um, if anyone's ever seen the movie The Sound of Music or seen the play, one of the undertones in that movie is basically the, the father in The Sound of Music is trying, he's a war hero, a naval officer, and the Germans are trying to convince him to come and fight for Germany. And um, that's sort of the premise of, um, of that movie. And one of the reasons why the, the, peop the family in The Sound of Music have to flee Austria. Um, he organized totalitarianism rule. Totalitarianism is basically total, you can see the root word total in there, but total control. So the Nazis began to organ. they controlled the government. Um, they, they controlled religion. Everybody became Protestant. There was no Catholics, no Jews, nothing else. Um, everybody was Christian. Um, he controlled school. So um, here in our country, we have the ability to criticize our government in school. Um, in Nazi Germany, you are not allowed to, to do that. S students were taught um, the Nazi way. They were taught that Nazis were the best, that this form of government was the best, that Germany was the best, and that there was no other culture out there that was better. Um, in our classes, we try to get away from doing that, and we want you to decide from yourself why, you know, if, if you think America is the best, um, and our form of government is the best, and, and the government and your teachers shouldn't ever tell you that democracy is the best, but simply that it is um, an evolution of um of ideas and of the you know philosophy of government, um, but but in Nazi Germany that simply wasn't true. And so s children, as you can see in this picture, young boys and girls were indoctrinated into this um, Nazi idealism. And so children became part of sort of the they became the future warriors of Germany, um, and they sort of developed this mentality of like Germany or die. Um, Hitler was also, um, sort of got control over national music. He was anti-jazz because it had roots in, with African Americans, and, um, and he opposed, um, he opposed anything that wasn't really pure German. He did this th through a Gestapo, which was a secret police. Gestapo is the word to describe the secret police. The Gestapo was out to get rid of anyone that opposed Hitler's rule, and so people would basically just disappear um, because the Gestapo would, would come and take them. And, and so many people were imprisoned in, in Nazi Germany, especially political enemies of Hitler. Then, um, to sort of solidify some of his racism, he passed a series of laws known as the Nuremberg Laws. Um, in these laws, which were passed in 1935, um, he deprived Jews of German citizenship and restricted them of many things. Um, basically, Jews were not allowed to marry any non-Jews, so he, he basically kept them from marrying whoever they wanted to. Um, they were not allowed to attend school um, and, and had to do things sort of separately. Um, they were not allowed to practice law or medicine, so many Jews who were lawyers or doctors um, lost their jobs. Um, and they were also not allowed to write or publish books, so Jewish ideas could not infiltrate German society. Um, this 
It was super oppressive. Um, Jews were also forced to wear stars. Um, and, and this chart that you can see here is basically um, the chart that was used to determine who counts as a Jew. And so, um, basically, it's written in German, so it's hard to read here, but basically, if you have any Jewish grandparents, you were considered a Jew or mixed blood, and then you became more, more Jewish, depending on how much Jew you had in you. Um, and so the chart here is basically, um, the black dots represent your, your Jewishness, um, and the white dots represent your, your, your pure grandparents. And, um, this was a pretty awful thing, an awful system that... Uh, Hitler used to oppress the Jews and, and basically spread racism against Jews. Um, the Night of Broken Glass is essentially um, the beginnings of Hitler's expansion. Um, a young Jew killed a cop for mistreating his parents and so the Nazis retaliated against this young Jew. Um, the Nazi retaliation led to basically mob violence. Most Germans got in on it, um, started beating and destroying Jews. They, they broke um, shop windows for, that Jewish people owned. Um, many Jews were beaten up, and, and it was a pretty awful night, um, an awful week for Jewish people. Um, during this time, Germans expanded and took over parts of Czechoslovakia and Austria. And they came up with a plan for the, quote, final solution, the final way of dealing with Jewish people, and that is to get rid of them. So, in 1935, Hitler denounced the Treaty of Versailles and began rearming um, Germany. Italy's Mussolini attacked Ethiopia. Italy was also a fascist government, and Germany basically um, wanted to, to be allied with Italy, um, who had sort of been their enemy during World War I. In 1936, German troops um, sent into the Rhineland, and so they started to reclaim territory there. In 1938, um, there was a, a treaty or a pact between Rome, Berlin, and Tokyo. So Rome being Italy, Berlin being Germany, Tokyo being Japan. And basically this pact created what's called the Axis powers, who become our enemies during World War II. Um, this pact basically says we will support each other and um, support one another's um, aggression and expansion in other countries. Um, and it, all these countries... Um, Italy, Germany, and Japan were all fascist governments. In 1939, German troops march into the rest of Czechoslovakia. Hitler and the USSR's Stalin sign a non-aggression pact, which doesn't last, and eventually the USSR declares war on Germany. In September, on September 1st, 1939, Nazi troops march into Poland. And this is officially the beginning of World War II. So we're going to watch a brief video on the Nazi Olympics, which were held in 1936. And the big thing I want you to think about is how did the world miss what was happening in Germany? How did we stand by and let them rearm? How did we stand by and um, watch them, you know, up until 1939, gradually taking over territory around them? Um, why didn't we notice it? In 1936, Germans host the Olympics. And so people from all over the world were there seeing fascism, seeing this extreme nationalism, and nobody did anything, um, or, or rather little was done to stop them. Why didn't we stop them? Um, so this is a big question I want you to think about as you are watching this video.